No, ale tam je bitva o to vždycky. Jo, jsou tam dvě místa tak akorát. No jo, jenže včera nás tam bylo šest šest uh, autobusů. Okay. Okay. ok, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to Can we the air on? It's really hot in It's here. Really hot. Yeah, it comes because, you know, he started now, so. Uh, okay, thank you. Dejte jim tam hodně, hodně. Ano, jen se zem zjedeme. Už se na tom pracuje. You know, the air condition needs a few seconds to spring on, so it will be taken care of. Welcome on board. My name is Dagmar, and we are going to have a small tour around the city today, which will be first of all Prague by dawn, and then also in the end Prague by night. And in order to give you something you have not seen during the tour, when it is still daylight, we shall start with the tour of the transmission tower. Uh, I guess you had a city tour. Okay, yes. the regular city tour. So you walked the park where you saw the babies on their hands and knees. Yes. yes. So you are going to see the tower on which they are climbing up and down. We shall get to the top of the tower. So you will see for which place they were originally designed. Then we'll drive down around the Wenceslas Square because that you haven't covered in your tour either. And then we shall drive up to the area of the Crown Council. But going all the way to a monastery, which is at the very top of the hill. And from there, we will have a view of the entire old city. And finally, we will stop at the Old Town Square, which then at night looks very different to what it does during the day. And so we'll be back at the hotel at 10 o'clock. Any questions so far? Okay. So we'll be getting off the, the bus uh, just about two or three times. If anyone doesn't want to get out of the bus, of course, we have the choice to stay on the bus. But we'll have three stops where you can get out. You can see now the tower on your left. It's coming now on the left-hand side in the part of the town called Vinohrady and Zhishkov. Vinohrady in Czech means vineyard. Maybe it is surprising to you, but we had extensive vineyards in our city, and that since the 14th century in particular. Wine has been grown here already in the 10th century, the tradition starting with our good King Wenceslas. You remember the guy, don't you? And so in the 14th century, this country was ruled by our famous king, the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, Charles IV. I guess you heard the name today as well. Okay. We were so, tested <laughs> you, many times. Oh, you were put up to a test? Yes. Okay, let's do that again. That's a nice idea. <laughs> Who was your guide? Sonia. Sonia. Oh, Sonia. Yeah, I know her. <laughs> Okay, so then Charles, who, um, I don't know how much she talked about his personal life, but um, he grew up in France at the French royal court because of his connection to the father, John of Luxembourg. They had strong connections to French-speaking countries. Uh, Charles actually baptized as Wenceslas himself, grew up there. And probably you were told that his first wife and the actually the only true love of his life was a French princess too, Blanche de Valois. They got married as kids, just imagine, seven years of age. There was a very, of course, a political arranged marriage. The children were then separated and they started to live together as a man and wife at the age of 15, that being of age in the Middle Ages. And of course, growing up at a French royal court meant that Charles, as a young prince, knew very well the French wines. And he decided to import the wine from Burgundy to our country. And the vineyards were on the right-hand side from here. So the area was originally called the Royal Vineyards. And it is also said that at the beginning, he was very disappointed at the outcome of the wine because, of course, we cannot compete with France as far as sunshine is concerned. But then he grew accustomed also to our version of his Burgundy wine. And uh, 
It has to be said, though, that we are producing much better white wines than red wines, okay? So you can get very decent white wines. Uh, if the year is good, then you can also um, have very good red wine. But I would say, if you like white wine, go for that. Because if you know the wines from California, South Africa, or Chile, you might be a little bit disappointed. Now, this part of the town is called Zhishkov. Zhishka being a troop leader of the Hussites, which were actually people who started to fight for the Reformation in the 15th century. And uh, close by here is a hill called Yitkov, and there a battle took place, which was won by the Hussites. And so then to honor the troop leader, this part of the town was called Zhishkov after him. It is uh, one of the parts of the town which were built around the historical Prague, which was encircled by walls, by fortification walls. And they were 19th century for the greater expansion of the city. And Zhishkov then was considered behind the city walls, one of the suburbs, and uh, it was workers' uh, class uh, area. And that's why you don't find here any historical sites like you do in the center. So we are now just a few meters away from the tower itself. So we'll turn to the right and we'll be getting off by the tower. Okay, so uh, we are now walking towards the tower. I will take care of the entrance into the tower. There is an elevator to take us up, so don't worry, you won't be walking up the tower. It will be rather... A famous tower. Well, this, this is the view from the famous tower. This is a straight one here, but uh -huh. the next one over there, halfway down in the middle is a blue swimming pool on the top. Uh -huh.
it's pleasant out here. And this is the Zhishkov Tower. This is what we were just looking at is supposed to look like at night. That would be cool. To spend their wedding night, mm -hmm. it's called the wedding apartment in the clouds. <laughs> ah. Well, that's nice. <laughs> They, when they built that tower, um, they built it right in the middle of a huge residential area. They have so many mountains around here. Why wouldn't they pick the top of one? It's a good question. Why did they build a tower here? Also, there was a great controversy when they were building it because not far from here is another Jewish cemetery. And they took part in the cemetery for the construction. Yes. Oh, on purpose. But that's um, the communists, you yes, know. Yes. They never cared about these things. And uh, if you would walk today on the Wenceslas Square down and the pedestrian street, there are large blocks of granite in the sidewalk. And these blocks of granite are actually Jewish tombstones. Jesus. Oh. Yeah. It was all done in communism. So that here you can see some of the nicer facades, which um, even though it's uh, not any fashionable area, are beautiful in themselves. Unfortunately, that graffiti crap is everywhere. Is there a reason? There, it really is prevalent. It is a problem. It's not a gang work, though, here. No. It's stupid young people yeah. who don't know anything better to do with their free time. And it's, of course, a great nuisance because you have a nicely restored facade yeah. and the next morning you'll have the graffiti on it. And they even uh, do the graffiti on the uh, metro cars because it's extra thrill to them because it's dangerous, of course. Yeah. And the point is that it's hard to catch them. They do it like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Most around here, no one to catch them. So that's the big problem. So that now in front of us, that modern building is the school, the economic college, which has quite a good reputation. That's why my son studied there. Uh, now, universities are free of charge in this country still, okay? It's only the, the private universities where you pay the tuition. State universities like this one, or the Charles University even, they are free of charge. That is actually a problem because, for example, medicine is very expensive study. And what our students do, they finish the studies and immediately leave for Germany to work there. Because if they would have here about 1,000 euros, they get 4,000 euros in Germany. So without paying a single penny to the country, they immediately leave. Which, in a way, is understandable. They earn much more money. New York, State, New York State just passed a, a law that uh, state colleges are now free. But, but they have to stay in the state after mm -hmm. they graduate. They uh, have to work there so many years before they... Yeah, that they, should be done like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Okay, and now we shall Maybe be Texas driving to the Wenceslas Square. Wenceslas Square is the center of the town, the heart of the town, you can say. The commercial hub of the city, too. Every important event in this uh, nation took place there. It's kind of a central meeting place for people here. And uh, it is the center of the part of the town called the New Town. The New Town you probably heard about is but from the 14th century. It was called or then the New Town. It was founded by, of course, Charles IV, who else, to expand the city. And the planning in his time was very modern for the 14th century because to give you the comparison with Paris in the same time, there the widest street was nine meters. Here in Prague, it was 23. What was, what was 23 meters? The widest street in Prague oh. in the 14th century. Okay. And, uh, in order to get there, we have to get on the highway now, which unfortunately was built in 1970s, right through the heart of the city. And it has completely cut off the Wenceslas Square from the National Museum. 
which we shall see in a minute. The building you are having now on the left hand side is the main railway station, right? uh, built at the beginning of the 20th century in Art Nouveau style. Now it's undergoing restoration, as you can see. And it was named after the American President Woodrow Wilson, who contributed to the creation of Czechoslovakia in Washington, America. The next small building here is a very beautiful German theater, nowadays the state opera, a building of the 19th century. The ugly modern square building next to it, also built in communism, unmistakably, and it was the communist parliament originally. And here we are coming to the National Museum, the scaffolded up building, which was built on the site of the previous entrance gate into the new town. As I said, the gates were being pulled down in the 19th century. The museum houses natural science collections. And here we are at the Wenceslas Square. On the left, you can see again our good King Wenceslas. And the common saying here is, let's meet under the tail, which means here by the horse. And all the protests, all the tragedies of this nation took place here. Be it the invasion of the Nazis in March 1938, uh, 39, sorry, be it the invasion of the uh, Soviets in August 1968, and so that also here people started to meet to protest against communism in November 1989 in the so-called Velvet Revolution. Why was it called the Velvet Revolution? Why was it called the Velvet Revolution? Because the political transition from communism to democracy went without any big violence. So as velvet is smooth, it was to, dis to describe the transition as a smooth one. Okay. Okay. So uh, Wenceslas Square, where also tragedy happened in January 1969, when a young student named of Jan Palach burned himself alive in front of the National Museum as a protest against the Soviet invasion. So that all happened here. On the left, you have a very beautiful hotel, Grand Hotel Europe, Art Nouveau style. There are very many other historical buildings here. On the corner is a hotel Yalta, next to the Ramada building. Yalta Hotel, 1930s, and that was in the communist time, one of the two only luxury hotels in Prague. So of course all the Westerners would be staying there. So it was wired from top to the cellar so that they could listen to what people are talking about. Excuse me, what is the name of this street again? It is the Wenceslas Square. Oh, okay. After good King Wenceslas, you're seeing here at the top. The whole street is called King that? Wins. Sorry? The entire street is called? The entire street is called the Wenceslas Square. Okay. It's nothing else. It's the entire square is Wenceslas Square. So we never do a King Wenceslas Christmas song. Well, now you at least right? know that you're singing about the Czech prince. I, I guess you never heard it before, the story of Wenceslas. It's a story which was brought to England by a Czech princess, Anne of Bohemia, in the 14th century. And then in the 19th century, the British composed this Christmas carol about Good King Wenceslas. Yeah, the driver reminds me also that uh, on the Wenceslas Square also positive things took place, like the celebrations when we won ice hockey championships. <laughs> And people come here also to celebrate the New Year's Eve. Uh, yeah. Especially the ice hockey championships were being <laughs> celebrated here greatly. So as many happy times as sad times as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just the heart of the city, so it went to the bad and to the good times as well. 
and now we are driving through the through the new town. We'll be arriving to another square here in Prague, Charles Square. Guess after whom it's been called? <laughs> yes, number four. <laughs> but originally it was a cattle market. Up. That's why it's so big, because you need a lot of open space when cattle is together. This is Zitna Street. And um, actually in size it's bigger than the size that bell. If you look to the right, you will see a building with a tower. That's a Gothic building, that means 14th century building, and it's a new city, town hall. A very beautiful example of architecture is the corner house, or the yellow one here, which is art nouveau style and very beautiful prominent style in Prague. Now we shall be driving down towards the river and we shall meet our dancing house. Did you see it today? Yeah. You did? Yeah, some did, of you did. did. Yeah. We're now on a different it's, street. Um, it's a house um, which was built by the famous architect Frank Gehry on the side of a house which was hit by a bomb in the uh, February bombing of Prague. And because he said that he was inspired uh, he said he was uh, inspired by Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. So that this glass part which you are seeing now, that's the part which uh, should remind you of a woman with a swinging skirt, yeah. Ginger. And around the corner is Fred. And at the top of this building is a beautiful restaurant, of course, house. so you have uh, quite a view from there. And even if you don't want to dine in the restaurant, if you buy there one drink, they let you go to the terrace and have the view. So Ginger and Fred, the dancing house. Yeah, yeah. yeah I see. 